Hello and welcome to Betfred's Football Show. It's a huge weekend of Premier League action. And this man last week got seven out of the ten results right and three correct scores as well. It's Paul Robinson. Paul, thanks for coming in. Let's have something similar this week, please. I'll try my best. I've done my homework for you, so hopefully we can do it. Good. Right, well, before we talk about the matches in detail, here's Matt Humes with the fixtures. Well, halfway through October and we're a quarter of a way through the Premier League season. Let's have a look at the games taking place this weekend. All gets underway this evening at uh, the Brentford Community Stadium. Uh, they are 2-1 to one to get the better over Bright. Incredibly, uh, both the last two wins were 5-2 successes, these sides. They clashed this evening. Then, Leicester, they need the points. They are favourites to get the better of Crystal Palace on a Saturday at lunchtime. It's a good battle of two promoted teams. Fulham odds on to get the better of Bournemouth at 3 o'clock. And it's another Midland derby for Nottingham Forest and they're 4-1 to one. they are desperate for the points after that draw on Monday night they are taking on managerless Wolves who are long gods on at home at Molyneux and then at tea time Spurs long gods on as they entertain Everton we move on to Sunday four games kicking off simultaneously at 2 o'clock Aston Villa take on Chelsea Chelsea as you would expect odds on favourites for that one and it's Arsenal looking for seven wins on the spin as they travel to Leeds looking to retain uh, their top spot Big game at Old Trafford, be a good one as well. Manchester United taking on Inform Newcastle United, just a shade of odds on uh, for that one. And then West Ham, another big win for them in Europe in midweek. A shade, a shade in favouritism as they travel to St Mary's to take on Southampton. But your eyes are drawn, aren't they? Right to the bottom of the page. Not really a title decider anymore. It's what we expected this season. Liverpool languishing in 10th going into this weekend. City, odds on 8-11 to 11 to win at Anfield. Another fascinating week of action in the Premier League. Certainly is a fascinating week. Thanks very much, Matt. Right, let's start on tonight's game. Friday night, Brentford versus Brighton. Some soul-searching for Thomas Frank to do after suffering their highest ever Premier League defeat when they played Newcastle last weekend, losing 5-1. Brighton have just lost two of the last 13 Premier League games, winning seven, drawing four. And both of the Seagulls' defeat this season have come against London clubs, Fulham and Spurs, last weekend. Now, do you see this one? It's going to be a really tight game, this. I mean, the Brentford team that's struggling for form, um, seen him lose last week against Newcastle. Brighton still to win under, under De Zerbi, though. They've come in, he's tried to change his way a little bit. They had a fantastic result at Liverpool. Um, a close defeat, let's say, last week against Spurs. So I think he's still trying to implement his style there. They're unbeaten in the last four at Brentford. They've lost only two of the last 13 Premier League games, Brighton. So they're a tough outfit. It's going to be a tough game for Brentford. I mean, they're, Brentford are seventh and Brighton 11th. So we're talking about two teams who have established themselves in the Premier League. What Brentford have done and Thomas Frank has done is extremely well. Um, I think the defensive errors have cost them. You look last week at, at Newcastle, Brentford, defensively they were poor. And I think they cost themselves a lot of the goals. A lot of the goals that they conceded could have been avoided last week. Come on then, give us a score. Leaky defence from Brentford's point of view. Um, seven of their ten points this season, though, from Brentford's point of view, have come at home. So it's a difficult place to go. But I think Brighton are in a better place than them at the moment. I think this is a game, it'll be a tight game. I've got here a tight game, edged by Brighton, because of their attacking strength. Both teams to score, 2-1 to Brighton. 2-1 Brighton, that is Paul's prediction. Right, let's turn our attention to the game of the weekend. It's 4.30 on Sunday. It's Liverpool versus Man City. Let's rejoin Matt. As you know, we are double at Hatcher Kevin on all your first goal scorer bets on every Premier League game. If there's one match this weekend when you're thinking about this, it is surely the clash at Anfield between last season's top two, Liverpool taking on Manchester City. The last ten times that these sides have clashed, nine of them have seen both teams score. In fact, the last four times I've played at Anfield, there's been more than four goals in the game. So, screams goals this one. They're not the prices you would have expected, though, would you, when the season kicked off, especially after that Community Shield game uh, as well. City 8-11. to 11. They are flying high. Liverpool languishing at present in mid-table. They are at 3-1. to one. I won't go with them prices, though. I will play your goals galore extra, because, as I mentioned, that stat, nine of the last ten, both teams have scored. City 7-4 to four to win and concede. 9-2, to two, Liverpool winning concede at Anfield this weekend and the score draw is 100-30. We all double that now to Kevin, as I mentioned, at the top of the piece. So let's have a look at your goal scorers for this one. And Mo Salah, of course, 
back in form with that uh, quick fire hat trick in midweek. He's 11 to 2 to open the score in 9 to 5 anytime. Darwin Nunes has found his shooting boots. Remember how good he looked as well against City at the beginning of the season. He's 5 to 1 to score first. 13 to 8 anytime. The Brazilian Firmino, 21 to 10 anytime. He too has been finding the net with regularity. But just look at the ammunition that, of course, Manchester City have. Well, it's all about that man at the top, isn't it? Erling Haaland, 9-4, to four, a hat-trick against Manchester United. Three hat-tricks already this season, 9-4 to four to score first. His odds on 4-6 to six to score any time at Anfield on Saturday afternoon. Phil Foden's a 6-1 to one to open the scoring. Kevin De Bruyne, a 15-2, to 12-5 to, to get on the, the score. She a fascinating game. So much talent on show. Cannot wait for this. 4.30 Sunday afternoon. Cheers, Matt. It's going to be a cracker. Right, some stats for you. Liverpool's haul of just ton... Oh, Liverpool's haul even of just 10 points and eight games is the worst start to a campaign in 10 years. If Liverpool lose this, there's 14 points between Arsenal and uh, Liverpool. What happens if Liverpool lose this game? They're out of the title race. You look at what happened last year. The title last year was won by one point. You know, to be this much adrift at this stage of the season is huge. I've no doubt that Liverpool will turn the corner. Liverpool will start winning games. But will Manchester City drop 14 points between now and the end of the season? I can't see it. We're talking about Arsenal at obviously first at the moment but I think we all know that Manchester City the juggernaut will keep rolling the question for Arsenal is longevity can they keep doing it can Arsenal stay with Man City Liverpool 14 points behind Man City if they don't win this game if they don't take points off Manchester City they're not in any kind of title race they're not at the moment and they're definitely not if they lose this game uh, two all at Anfield last season and two all at the Etihad as well uh, but Liverpool are winless in their last five Premier League games against Man City uh, Man City have picked up four points in the last two Premier League away games against Liverpool, just one fewer than they'd earned in their previous 17 visits to Anfield. It never used to be a good hunting ground, uh, Anfield, for Man City. They have changed that. Right, let's talk Liverpool first of all. Uh, Mo Salah has scored four uh, out of five Premier League home games for Liverpool against Man City. That is a good record. Got that hat-trick midweek as well. That record-breaking Champions League hat-trick. Where are Liverpool? He's eleven to two to score first. By the way, where are Liverpool at? Where are they at? They're, they're trying to find a formula. I mean, in midweek against Rangers, I thought they were excellent. I thought you know for 50, 60 minutes, Rangers were in the game. The substitutions changed it. Salah came on and got his world record-breaking hat trick in six minutes. And the, the difference for me was Salah. He played down the middle when he came on. He's been out on the right hand side. We know how good Mo Salah is. He was the world's best player 12 months ago. You don't become you know, the, the, the gap doesn't become, you don't have that big of a drop off and you don't question his quality. I just think he liked that freedom of coming inside. He almost seemed as though he had a point to prove. And I think going into this game before the start of the season, you wouldn't even bear thinking that Manchester City could be such clear favourites at Anfield. The gulf between the two teams, City is, uh, Liverpool are struggling defensively. We know so much has been made of Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, the partnership that Van Dijk's had at the back. But Canate came in alongside Van Dijk and he looks so much better. For me, he has to so play. So can they kick on? I mean, obviously everyone's talking about the 7-1, mm. but is the most important Canate coming back and kind of kick on from that now? Canate has to play for me yeah. with him and Van Dijk. I thought Canate was excellent. Salah playing more centrally. Is that a, a resolution to his goal-scoring problem, the three of them up the top? Liverpool have to, have to win this game. They, they can't just not get beaten. They have to win this game. They have to take points off City. It's a big ask for them. They have to have a platform from somewhere. If they can't kick on from a 7-1 win, then he's got an issue. I think he's got team selection problems. He doesn't know his best 11. I think he does. the formation-wise, he changed. He almost played a 4-4-2 against Rangers and it looked a lot better, which padded out that midfield. I think Liverpool, in a one-off, listen, are more than capable of winning this game. They've got the quality, they've got the personnel. Whether they've got the structure and the mentality to do it at the moment is what's questionable. Can they close that gap on City? I don't think City can drop that many points. So, in a word, no. But in a one-off game, Liverpool can win this game. Uh, two seasons ago, it was 4-1 at Man City at Anfield. Phil Foden has scored in his two Premier League away games at Anfield. Phil Foden is 6-1 to to score first. Haaland is 9-4 to four to score the first goal. Erling Haaland has got 20 in 13. Now, he's 12-1 to one to get a hat-trick, is Haaland. But just a warning here, Haaland's not scored a hat-trick since the 2nd of October. Oh, that lot of worrying times. <laughs> worrying times for Manchester City fans. He's not scored a hat-trick. But he could have done if he wasn't taken off at half-time last week. He could have had another one, couldn't he? I mean, what a phenomenal talent he is. We've waxed lyrical so long about him. But the one thing for you in this game with your bets is goals. The guarantee, almost guaranteed that both teams will score in this game. 
You've got to be creative with your bets. How many goals? Who's going to score them? Timing of your goals, etc. I'm this is a real game that I'm looking forward to watching this weekend. You so know, you I look am. at the weekend and you plan your weekend and you think, oh, I'm going to watch Can't this miss game. That one. No, it, it's it's some, it's going to be the spectacle of the weekend, if not the season so far. There's going to be two teams that play open, expansive football that will go after one another. We know that Liverpool can concede. City, yeah, we know how good they are going forward. And there's, it's going to be a real battle of heavyweights. It's going to be a great game. Score. There's going to be goals. There's going to be lots of goals. I think City will get the majority of them. I've gone 4-2 to Manchester City. And if that happens, you, that's it. Liverpool, out of the title race. For me, it is just, yeah. 4-2 Man City. That is Paul Robinson's prediction. Right, let's go to the early kickoff on Saturday at 12.30. Leicester versus Palace. Uh, Brendan Rodgers criticised his team for getting too comfortable during their 2-1 Premier League defeat to Bournemouth. And uh, obviously, it is not good viewing for Leicester. They are bottom of the pile. Yeah, he's in a, he's in a lot of trouble, Brendan. And I think it's, it's a difficult game for him at home. The atmosphere can obviously turn toxic very quickly. And there's a lot of people that want him moved on at the moment. Palace are a difficult team for me to play against. I think they've got a false league position. I'm looking at what they've done. They've, they've faced four out of the so-called top six already. They're unbeaten in the last 12 league, Premier League games against teams in the bottom three. So it's not an ideal team for Leicester to, go, to be coming up against. I think he's got a lot of problems there, Brendan Rodgers, confidence-wise. You would expect them to they beat Forrest at home 4-0. You would expect them to kick on, go to Bournemouth and get a result. But I was looking at doing my homework, like we said before the, before the, the show started. No team has dropped more points from winning positions since the start of last season than Leicester City. 35 points they've dropped from winning positions. So he's got a problem. He's got a problem yeah. with mentality when they go it's, ahead. It's he's got 14 got... points this season as well. 14 which is a lot, isn't it? When they've 35 only played in what? total. So that's not a coincidence. That's not something Nine new games, this yeah. season. That's something that's been in that squad for a long time. I mean, he's got defensive problems. He's got problems going forward. Vardy's not the player that he was. He can't play every week. And I think he needs to address it quickly. Prediction then? Uh, as I said, I think it's going to be a very, very tough game for Leicester. I think Zaha is the player to watch this weekend. Looking at Zaha's stats... Seven versus Leicester, directly involved in nine. He's got seven goals versus Leicester and two assists. So he's the man for me. I'm going to go for Palace to take advantage of vulnerable Leicester. 2-0 Palace and Zaha on the score sheet. 2-0 Palace for Paul. Right, let's go to the three o'clock kickoffs. Fulham versus Bournemouth. Of course, Fulham had that defeat last weekend. Bournemouth are now unbeaten in five straight under Gary O'Neill. And only lost... Uh, four goals in that time as well. He's done a great job, hasn't he? There's a real you know, clamour for him to get the job full-time. I don't think anybody thought he was in the running to start with, but the way that he sets his team up meticulously, um, the way they went to Newcastle and got a result. And I, I like what he's done. I like that he's made him defensively more robust. Last week they went 1-0 down against Leicester. They came back to win it. We're looking at two of the top two in the Championship last year who were sitting 10th and 8th respectively in the Premier League. So you, can, you, know, you appreciate the job that the managers have done there. Um, it'll be a tough ask for, for Bournemouth to go to Fulham. They've lost seven of their last eight in London. So London's not a happy hunting ground for Bournemouth. But I do think it'll be a really good game. Bournemouth, uh, Fulham are struggling for clean sheets. They concede too many goals. But at the, at the same time, they'll be looking to get Mitrovic back. They have Mitrovic missing last weekend against West Ham, which I think was a problem for them. If he comes back, I think it's a different game. Come on in. I've got Bournemouth have the momentum going into this, but Mitrovic is the key for, for me. Look at the team sheet before. If Mitrovic is fit... Fulham score. I think it'd be a good entertaining game. Both teams to score, 2-2 two, two draw. 2-0 two for Paul. Uh, right, Wolves Forest. Uh, Paul was spot on about uh, Forest on uh, Monday night. He called that absolutely bang on. Uh, Nottingham Forest have lost three of their four away Premier League games this season. They've only scored once on the road so far. That was in a draw at Everton. Wolves have only scored three goals in the Premier League this season. And we're still waiting on who's going to be a Wolves manager. You've just said it. Do you need me to say anything? Wolves have scored three. Forest have scored one on the road. It's got nil-nil written all over it, hasn't it? Wolves looking for a manager. Forest struggling for form. This isn't going to be a classic. This is one of them games that if it was in your back garden, you'd probably keep the curtains closed. I can't imagine a classic here, but we may be proved wrong. I've got, it'll either be an absolute goal fest with two teams going at each other end-to-end, -end, or it'll be very, very cagey, likely to be a, a very dull score. Looking at their history this season, neither are prolific scorers. This is either going to be a very, very boring nil-nil or a one each. What are you going for then? Nil-nil. Definitely nil-nil-nil. He was spot on about Forrest last Monday. Uh, the final game on Saturday is 5.30. Uh, Spurs, Paul's old club versus Everton. Uh, Tottenham have won 
their last seven Premier League home games, their longest run since a streak of 14 between November 2016 and May 2017. Where are Spurs at? I this think is I ask you this every week. Yeah, this I? is going to be an interesting time for them. I was in good the win stadium. Midweek, yeah, it? I was in the stadium for the Eintracht Frankfurt win midweek. First half, they were very good. They were impressive. Uh, after going one down, they showed a lot of character. But then they made it hard for themselves in the second half when Frankfurt went down to ten men. Spurs had a couple of opportunities to close the game out. Obviously, Kane's penalty just after that, he had a ball across the front to, to Brian Hill, who didn't convert. And then they, they went into the last twenty minutes of that game, kind of holding on against ten men. Antonio Conte has had a little bit of criticism levelled at him when he's had teams in the past of going again midweek, been able to rejuvenate his side from weekend to midweek. And this stage of the season now, the Champions League games coming in, that for me will be the biggest test for Spurs. He doesn't like to change his team. We've not seen too much rotation. You know, Bissouma's had to sit and wait his time. Kulazewski's injured, which has made it easy for him with Richarlison and Son. Now is the time where his squad rotation will be tested and the fatigue of these players. The third on 20 points. Mm. I think if it wasn't for Arsenal's such a good start to the season. Spurs fans would be absolutely delighted with it. I think they will be anyway. I think from where they were, the progression line since Antonio Conte's come in, and you can see they've got an identity. The one thing that Spurs didn't have under Nuno Espirito de Santa, and to an extent under Jose, other than being very defensive, under Conte they've got an identity. We as English fans don't appreciate the art of defending, which at times is hard to watch. And Spurs at Arsenal, it was a hard watch because of what he tried to do. But his way of playing, they've got an identity, they've got a style and I like what they do. Prediction? I think it'd be tough against Everton. It's a different Everton, but I think Richarlison will have a point to prove. I've got a strong Spurs to win 2-0 with Richarlison getting on the score sheet against his old club. Right, that is your Saturday matches. When both teams score, it's goals galore. Matt Hughes has picked out his goals galore selections for you. It was a near miss last weekend. We got seven out of 10 on my goals galore bonus effort. So let's try again and dwell I'm taking on Mahatma Gandhi because what did he say? Never back the early kickoff. Well, I am. I know. 12.30, Leicester taking on Crystal Palace. It just screams goals. Leicester, great going forward. Cannot uh, keep a clean sheet. I think this one is a banker for the goals. Gone. Fingers crossed. It gets us off to a fantastic start, taking a big risk this weekend. Liverpool Man City is a given. Nine out of the last ten times of clash. Both teams have scored always goals when these two meet. Preston Stoke. Now, Preston, obviously, we've known them this season, not been scoring heavily over the last two games. Both teams have scored in that, including that 3 2 win at Carrow Road. And similarly with Stoke, put three plus uh, Sheffield United last time out. Both teams have scored in their last two games as well so that one is in two anti-post favourites pre-season with Watford and Norwich for the championship they clash in front of the sky cameras on Saturday night so I've had to put that one in uh, as well and Port Vale versus Forest Green again two teams that have both scored and conceded in their last pair of games in League One I think that one is good for the goals galore bonus keeper as well so fingers crossed five matches ten teams all find the back of the net can pay us out at a handsome and rewarding 16 to 1 Thanks very much. It really is a super Sunday. The live game on Sky is Villa versus Chelsea. And Aston Villa have just won one of their last 10 Premier League games against Chelsea, beating them 2-1 on the final day of the 2020-21 season. New manager in charge at Chelsea. I think he's definitely uh, making his mark on this team. How do you see this? Villa, Chelsea. Villa have been poor, haven't they? You know, the, I, think, score, can I? I think Steven Gerrard's under a lot of pressure. In all honesty, they you know, went to Leeds, and yes, they went down to ten. Leeds went down to ten men, but it was almost as though they were happy with the points. They're not scoring they, enough, did, they didn't have anything. There was no potency going forward. He's got the players that you look at Ings, you look at Watkins, you look at Coutinho. The quality that they've got in that team, um, that they're able to score goals, but he's just it's just not working for him. Then they went to Forest, and they were pretty much the same. We called it in here in the studio. It was a pretty distinctly average performance, not a great game, no potency going forward and relied on a great strike from Ashley Young from outside the box. Whereas flip the other side to Chelsea, new manager, two wins against AC Milan, close win against uh, Crystal Palace, very good win against Wolves. They seem to be in a really, really good place for me, Chelsea, at the moment. It's going to be a big ask and I think, listen, I think he's under a lot of pressure, Stephen, at the moment. I think he's, 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 he's only lost one of, of the last three games, I think it is. But they're not in the last enough. four, but they're not score. Uh, lost one at home this season. So you look at his numbers and he'll, he'll defend himself against his number, his record, but it's not good enough for where Villa are, for what they've spent and where they need to be. If they lose this weekend, I think he's bang under it. Prediction? 
I've gone a bit, a little bit creative with this one. I've looked at Chelsea's stats since Potter's come in. The, the, the centre halves have been a lot more focused on set plays. Last week, Chalabar had two shots on target. Koulibaly had a shot on target. So I've gone for a Chelsea to, Chelsea win to nil. I've gone three nil Chelsea, but also Koulibaly to score, or at least be a little bit creative. Have a look at the centre halves for shots on target or goals from set plays. Koulibaly, Chalabar, or Chelsea from a set play, but three nil Chelsea. Well, it's interesting to say that Chelsea have had more different goal scorers than any other side in the Premier League. Mm. And he's working a lot on the set plays. When you look at the, the figures and you see how the centre halves are involved, there's value to be had in defensive goal scorers. I think from Chelsea. All right, then, the game you're going to be at on Sunday, Leeds versus Arsenal. Right, Leeds, 14th, played eight, nine points. Are you worried? Yeah, because they've not won since the Chelsea game. Um, you know, they've, they've done OK under Jesse March. They had a great win against Chelsea. Everything looked right. Press from the front, the style of play. Players looked like they were playing from him. Since then, it's, they've fallen away and they've played against teams where they, they should be getting results. Last week against Crystal Palace, they started particularly well. Went 1-0 up with Pascal Stroik, and then they couldn't see the game through. Defensive frailties have cost Leeds. I think is the, the squad depth is something that will potentially cost them in the long term. But five games without a win, but they're unbeaten at Ellen Road. We know the fortress that Ellen Road is. It's very difficult for teams to go there. It's going to be a difficult game for Arsenal to go there. Leeds will make it hard. The one thing you can say about Jesse March and his teams... They will go down trying to do the right thing. They won't sit with five at the back against Arsenal and four in midfield. They will press from the front, which will probably play to Arsenal's advantage because of the quality that they've got in behind. But Leeds will try and press Arsenal, they'll make it hard for them. And it's how Arsenal cope with that this weekend. Um, are Leeds in a relegation scrap again or can they get themselves out of it? Leeds' first aim this season, as was every season, is to stay in the Premier League. But I think with the new manager coming in, the way that he's, he's bought himself time by keeping him in the league last year, but they have to have progression. He's brought a lot of players in, he's brought his own players in. I think that not a relegation scrap. I mean, I'm surprised how Bournemouth have started. I'm surprised how Fulham have started. But Leeds are down, when you look at the teams that are realistically going to be in that bottom five or six, you would put Leeds in there because of the budget and the way that they are. They have to keep themselves out. They have to be a bit progressive. They can't afford another relegation battle because of what they've spent this year where they are now. And a quick word on uh, Arsenal. I think when it went 2 all on Sunday, uh, certainly Arsenal 12 months ago, yeah. it could have gone wrong. I yeah. think that was a big result for Arsenal at home last Sunday. Massive result. But they're getting a lot of plaudits, and rightly so. I mean, from a Spurs point of view, it's difficult to sit here and say <laughs> that. But they've been fantastic. You know, they've given Arteta time. That We talk about teams having an identity. They've got an identity. They've got pers personnel. Martinelli's been absolutely outstanding this year. Jesus has led the line. We talk about these players. Ben White, for me as well, going from Leeds... Uh, obviously on loan from Brighton went there and I think he's done his England prospects no harm I'd be surprised if he doesn't get into the squad they've got a squad of players and Granite Xhaka as well you know he's got three assists already this season so I think he, he looks from where he's been he's, he's all of a sudden a fan's favourite again Prediction? I think it'd be tough for Leeds but I've been a bit more creative as well so I'm looking at Xhaka with his assist this year he's playing a lot higher up the field so I've got a creative bet builder Xhaka to get an assist and also to get booked. I think there's some value in that. But I've gone for an Arsenal win, 2-1. Uh, also at 2 o'clock on Sunday, Man United versus Newcastle. Uh, Manchester United have just lost once of their last 37 home league games against Newcastle. And that was a 1-0 loss in December 2013 under David Moyes. They've got a good record against Newcastle at home. But this is a very different Newcastle now. Yeah, ex it? exactly that, Mark. A very, very different Newcastle. Different proposition. They've, they were difficult to beat this season. They were going, putting a run of games together, being unbeaten. But now they're winning games. You look at their last two games, they've scored nine goals. They demolished Brentford by five last week. Week before, they put four past Fulham. So this is a different Newcastle that's going to Old Trafford. Big problem for Newcastle this weekend, Almiron and St Maximan. Both missed training yesterday, could potentially be injured. Their attacking potency, yes, they've got Callum Wilson and others. But without Almiron, who's been a different player this year, and St Maximan, I think they're, they're, they're blunted a little bit up front. Um, come on in, give us a prediction. Man United, I mean, I, they, were, they were good at Everton last week. I tipped them to lose at Everton last week. Yeah, they I had think a they bit of fight character. about them as well, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think they were unlucky with a Rashford goal as well, with a handball. I mean, how many goals were we deprived of last week? Matt could have had a load in his bet builder yeah. with all the handballs that we were deprived of last week. Um, but Rashford's goal, does Ronaldo start? Do, can Eriksen and Fernandes play together in, in that team? We, we're yet to see. I, I think this will be a really good game. As I say, it's a different Newcastle. I've gone 2-2. I think there's, a real, there's real value for goals and a draw in this game. And also at 2 o'clock on Sunday, Southampton versus West Ham. West Ham uh, qualified for the Europa Conference knockout stages. 
100% uh, record as well. West Ham won their last two Premier League games. They're beginning to get on track, West Ham, aren't they, after that awful start. They're now 13th. Yeah, and a good win in Europe last night. So they're, they're, he's managing to rotate his squad. Something that they, we talked about last year was how threadbare his squad was. But he's got a, a good squad this year. He's got injuries, Maxwell Corne to come back into it. He's got a lot of good attacking players in behind Antonio and Skamaka. He's getting the balance right of which one to play and who to play. Skamaka, for me, I really like. Skamaka, Bowen, Paqueta as well. He's going to be a top player. I don't think he's got to the level that we expect from him yet. Um, but Southampton, on the other hand, they're a team that's in, in trouble. The managers are banging trouble there as well. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about him leaving. Four straight defeats. Um, that they're not very, very um, good going forward. As Just in won two of the last goals. 15 Premier League games. Mark, I'm looking at the, the stat here. One of 19 games at St Mary's has had more than three goals. So I don't think it's going to be a goal fest. They're not that good potent going forward to Southampton. West Ham, for me, they've got the attacking quality in the final third to, to, to make it another miserable day for Southampton on the south coast, I think. Go on, prediction. Uh, West Ham's power in the final third. I don't think there's going to be many goals. West Ham to win, under three and a half goals, 2-1 West Ham. Right, I'm going to recap all of Paul's selections. Can you remember? I certainly can. <laughs> right, it was Brentford 1, Brighton 2 on Friday night. The early kickoff on Saturday is going for Leicester 0, Palace 2. Three o'clock kickoff, Fulham 2, Bournemouth 2. Wolves and Forest 0-0. Going to be last on the match of the day, according to Paul. And then we've got Spurs 2, Everton 0 in the 5.30. And it really is a super Sunday. Uh, Paul's going for Aston Villa 0, Chelsea 3, Leeds 1, Arsenal 2, Manchester United 2, Newcastle 2, Southampton 1, West Ham 2, and in the game of the weekend, he's going for Liverpool 2, Man City 4, and if you said it early on, if Liverpool lose, that's it, the title is not going to Anfield. It's just too big a gap points-wise. I can't see, yes, I can see Liverpool gaining that many points because they can only get better. City, I can't see them dropping that many points between now and the end of the season. In fact, they won't. Arsenal top of the league, not City. I know they are, but their, their question is longevity. Can they do it? I've been very, very impressed with them. Have they got a big enough squad and a mentality to stay there? There was questions a couple of weeks ago. Have they played anyone in the top four, top six? They hadn't. They have done now. They've passed that test. They have to keep passing tests. We know that City can You asked it. me early on before we came on air, Man City are 10 to 1 to go a whole Premier League season unbeaten. They're the first team since the Invincibles that have got to this stage of the season, I think, that could do it. And I think you look at the quality that they've got, they have got a real opportunity, if they beat Liverpool, to go this whole season unbeaten. You just want to upset the Arsenal players. You heard it here you? first. You just want to upset the Arsenal at, players. At 10 to 1, I'll have a couple <laughs> of quid on that, unbeaten. Right. right. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Please, if you're having a bet this weekend, please keep it fun and gamble responsibly.